my own world of make-believe Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watch me weep I love everything Fire spreading all around my room My world's so bright, it's hard to breathe But that's alright, hush Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome to the vlog. So just got back from the gym and before I eat quickly, I thought I'd just show you some of this clothing that I got sent. So the company's called South 4, kind of obviously that's why it says it on the shirt, Alex Durr. But uh, yeah, the kit they sent me is really nice, the material's super good. Um, it's like a dry fit, which I prefer. I don't really like training in cotton as much. Uh, this is closer to Lycra, so they sent me this sweet t-shirt. Don't know if you can see it, but it even says LC on the back, which I wasn't expecting. They sent me these shorts, which are very nice, breathable, breathable material too. They also hooked me up with this rash guard, which I really like. It's super nice, comfy, fits nice, and it's got some of this cool detailing. They call it like Tectonic. It's got this branding here, so I'm gonna be using that tonight at Jiu Jitsu. But yeah, basically, they liked my videos. They sent me some stuff out, said see if you like it, and. Obviously I wouldn't ever promote a product or a company that I didn't actually like, wouldn't actually want to wear because long term no one's going to no one's gonna want to buy anything and yeah it's just going to completely backfire on me. If you do want to check out any of their stuff, they've given me like an affiliate link so go use that, I'll put it down below. Um, just have a look, if you like anything and you do decide to get it, then if you use that link it will support me, put a little bit of money in my pocket so I'd really appreciate that. Just give you guys a super quick summary shot. Boom. Anyway people, time for food. First up we've got some apple, there's two more halves, quarters even, buried under there, pink lady, red seedless grapes, tiny bit of leftover cucumber and hummus, and then half an avocado. Next up just some very messy toast and marmalade, bit of lurpak hidden underneath as well. Finally we're just going to have some chicken sausages and ketchup. Glamorous, I know. So guys, quick update. So since the last vlog, I've just been getting through life really, to be honest, doing my normal thing, training, working through a few things. Before, if you watched the last video, my belly button was a little bit off. In the end, I had to end up getting antibiotic cream for that. Uh, not a big issue, I think it's like, kind of like a spot or something. The doctor had a really fancy name for it, which goes way uh, beyond my head. And then the more pressing issue was, I had a bit of a trapped nerve, something I've never had before, um, in my neck, just kind of randomly after training. It's kind of in the top uh, top right hand section of my neck. My shoulder was giving me problems and I felt like in between my collarbone and my trap um, 
it was getting really stiff and I was getting some pins and needles and a bit of burning down my right arm. So at first I thought it was my shoulder and then I googled it and stuff um, and realised there could be a few different reasons. And yeah, I went to the physio and they kind of released a lot of the pressure, did some various massages and stuff. So that's getting a lot better now. But enough of the health stuff. Main thing for today is we're going to go over Q&A as promised last video. I had a few good questions. So I'm going to have my phone here but we'll get through them. So the first one, what inspired you to go into MMA? It's kind of, yeah, multifaceted. So originally... Anderson Silva sparked my interest watching uh, videos of him online and then I'd say watching like the ultimate fighter and a proper fight um, Clay Guida versus Diego Sanchez. I was like this is this is pretty crazy. This is pretty different and then I'd say the main Kind of two fighters to then actually think about training would be GSP and John Jones watching them uh, big inspirations to my favorite fighters technique wise of all time But in terms of me actually getting into fighting which is something I didn't really ever anticipate would probably be once I got to the gym and at the time back in like 2011 when I first started uh, Tsunami gym Had a whole like roster of pro fighters like it was kind of one of the top MMA gyms in like the UK. So yeah, the, the pro fighters probably inspired me more. Probably the main two would be my main two coaches at the time when I first started. I guess when you're young and uh, you look up to the older guys, the professional guys, it's going to be the guys that are actually coaching you. And the main two coaches at the time were Robbie Olivier and Luke Barnett, who were both fighting, but Luke was a bit younger. And at the time, he was getting into like the ultimate fire and stuff. So to actually like see guys, I think John was in the UFC too then, but to actually see guys like kind of getting to that threshold and stuff, um, like early in their careers is is a big inspiration. Like at the time I was definitely like, wow, you can actually like do this type of thing. You can actually like get on the big, big stage, you know? So that was pretty cool. Next question, is there a specific exercise to practice timing for striking? So this is an interesting one. Um, I think, yeah, if there was a blueprint for figuring out timing, everyone would jump on that straight away because it is so important. I'd probably put it down to mainly pads, um, but this is very reliant on having a good pad holder. Yeah, if, if you have a bad pad holder, it can really mess you up. So yeah, I'd say pad work is the most important thing as well as sparring as well, where you get to do it under actual pressure, more closer to fight conditions. But those are definitely the main two. But I think some people probably have a better natural tendency with timing. It's kind of one of those intangible things. It's not like, if I think you can definitely make it better through mainly those two options um but yeah quite a lot of it's probably natural as well next one favorite exercises to improve overall power both punches and kicks i think again this could kind of be a bit of a natural one people say uh some people have more natural power but i think that would normally kind of come a lot of the time come down to the heavier people in the weight category so obviously that is one option you could put on some mass which is probably going to increase your power you could do some, if I was going to do like a specific exercise in terms of like the gym, I'd probably focus on something explosive like a plyo or anything to do with my legs or any type of rotational force like core as well. But I think much more important than the gym as, again, yeah, this is, I guess, kind of shown by people saying, oh, some people have natural power, is the people with the best body mechanics, best balance, best positioning are the ones that are gonna um, actually hit the hardest with any type of strike that they've thrown. Like, I think a good example would be someone like Israel Adesanya. If you guys watched the most recent fight with Kelvin Gastelum, I wouldn't say Adesanya is like a power punch or anything, but as soon as he was in the right positions, Kelvin was tired, he started overreaching and stuff, and Israel just did like a pull backhand, or someone like Connor as well, he's a good example. Um, because he's in a better position, he's more balanced, he can uh, punch with better mechanics. That's what's going to supply the power, knock people down, knock people out. Same when Aldo overreached on Connor. There's, there's, there's the whole thing of if they're moving forward and they walk onto your punch like a collision effect. So, again, I don't think there's like an exact recipe for power. Like some some guys in MMA get knockouts from just pretty much just swinging, um, putting the whole body weight into it. But if you look at the boxers. They, they hit a lot harder just because they have better technique. For kicks and knees, just make sure you're putting your hips in properly 
and then for elbows you normally have to step in to generate the power but in general i think it does come down to kind of dynamic balance and rotational power allowing you to transfer the weight effectively and the final question is what do you prefer ground or striking so to be honest i don't really think i have a preference between the ground and striking probably because i came into mixed martial arts without a background i didn't start in any specific discipline i started in mma and I really enjoy the diversity, so I like training both, I like fighting with both, um, and then yeah, I normally pick the option which I think my opponent is weakest at, as I consider myself a well-rounded individual. I think if I just trained one for the whole time, I'd probably get more bored of it. I really yeah, enjoy the versatility of being able to train a bit of everything, it keeps it uh, fresh, doesn't get stale. I think striking is kind of like fencing in a way, and the ground is kind of like chess. So, although I guess actually striking is a little bit like chess as well. I enjoy fighting and sparring the most when it is, yeah, full MMA, not just jiu-jitsu or uh, wrestling or boxing or Muay Thai because then I have all the different options available, available to me. I get to blend them all together. In terms of fighting, I want to beat everyone everywhere. I know that's not going to be possible because you're going to come up against specialists, like if you come up against a really good wrestler... Like, it's probably not going to be possible to out-wrestle them unless they're really deficient in another area. Like, if you look at GSP, sets up his double leg with a jab and a feint, and then he's been able to take down much better wrestlers than him. So, obviously, there are options like that. But in terms of actually enjoying it, I, I just like all technique, to be honest. Anyway, that's going to wrap up the Q&A. Thank you to anyone that left a question. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. If you do want another one in the future, please like the video. Just going to have a quick afternoon snack. A sneaky bowl of cornflakes and I'll see you guys at dinner. Okay guys, dinner time, just having a snack while I make it. Whenever it's Easter, my mum loves buying hot cross buns, so having one of those with some jam and some strawberries too. Here's the main, just cook some salmon in the oven, finishing it off with some teriyaki sauce, got some rice and peas, salt and pepper, and then with that gonna have some sweet chilli sauce. And for dessert, just having an orange. So all done with dinner now bit later today as the class is later on a Thursday. This is my first week back to Jiu Jitsu and so far I've only been drilling. I think I'm going to be drilling for a little while uh, as my rib is still sore before I get back to rolling live. Coach Leo's actually away tonight but one of the other guys will be covering the class so see you there. <laughs> Overthrown, meet me at the cornerstone. I know that I can't be without you. This bond is solid gold. We're a diamond and an emerald. It took me forever to find you. Cause when it's all over, the love that you give will be there to guide you.
we're back from the gym now, always a late one on this Thursday, but good session, kind of just end up doing my own thing, just drilling and then showing one of the guys a few moves. Those are some of the techniques that I've been watching on video but haven't been able to practice yet, so really enjoyed just going through some of them. There's quite a lot of uh, little details I've been wanting to iron out, which obviously you can watch and you can understand conceptually, but it really does help to be able to really feel it on someone's body. Like it'd be cool one day to get a grappling dummy or something to practice. But it's really good to be back grappling on the whole. Obviously it's been two months since I've done any and whilst drilling is like amazing, is like the foundation of like learning all the techniques, I, I do really want to get back to rolling but I can't rush this thing, you know. I've got to be sensible, I've got to be smart. I'm a lot better now, like mentally, at dealing with injuries, so I can be patient with it. I'm not going to rush back. I'm going to make sure I get my body used to all the movements, slowly progress and everything. And any type of progress is progress, even if it's baby steps. And as well as me drilling, I thought I'd show a bit of the rolling. Tonight, I focused on one of my main training partners, Gabriel, who was the blue belt in the black gi. He's training for the British Open in about a month's time. And yeah, he's really solid technical blue belt. So I thought you guys could watch a bit of him. I like it to be honest when I show other people on the vlog not just myself because even though this isn't like top level black belts or anything I think it's really cool to see other people's styles. Everyone's kind of got their unique style. Obviously most people follow like a series of fundamentals but given different body types and weight and everything else everyone has to play a slightly different game. Anyway guys that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!